They say that bigger is always better, and to be honest, that's a load of crock. Because there are plenty of things that need to be small in order for things to be done properly and efficiently. However, when it comes to vehicles, there's almost a compulsion by certain people and companies and even countries to have the biggest and largest rides around. For some logical reasons, and some for showing off because they feel like they can. From Australian road trains to the beast known as Bigfoot number no. 5, here are 20 largest vehicles on Earth. Number 20. Australian Road Trains Now as I said, sometimes large vehicles are made for no real reason other than to be able to show off, but in the case of the Australian Road Trains, it's a different story because these land trains, as they're known, are vital for getting materials across the country, especially when some of those materials are truly massive in size and weight. Despite the name, the vehicle in question is actually a truck, but it's one that's outfitted with special trailers so that it can hold the various large and or heavy cargo pieces. The heritage of these unique transport assets dates back to the days when a single source of power, which was usually animals, pulled all the multiple wagons, and obviously it only went upwards from there. However, a big question you might be asking is, why would they need such large vehicles to move goods? The answer lies on the map of Australia itself. You see, unlike most countries, and yes, I know that Australia is a, also a continent, Australia doesn't have a fully mobilized transportation system when it comes to its interior. The outback, as it's known, is an uninhabited place that has road terrain all around, making a train there unfeasible, but roads are doable. So thus, these road trains are built to be able to handle the rough roads and to ensure that large materials such as metals and other building items are able to be transferred from the southern reaches of the country to the northern stretches of the continent. But here's a fun fact. Before these land trains came about, they used to move materials by camel. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Bigfoot number 5. This is one where it's just showing off, because when you make a monster truck, you're doing it for the looks and the adrenaline that you get when you hit the gas and go flying through the air. And when it comes to the Bigfoot 5, it's a monster truck that really showcases its size, as it's the tallest monster truck in the world. One look at this truck will show you how that came to be, because the truck is literally standing on the biggest tires you've ever seen. The irony here is that those tires, well, they came from an Australian road train. They took them from a broken down one and then made a monster truck out of it. Now that's ingenuity. Due to its unusual height, this truck has never actually competed in public, but has crushed cars on certain occasions, which is no doubt enough to get the crowd into an event, I'm sure. In addition to its height, Bigfoot number no. 5 is also the heaviest truck ever built at 28,000 pounds, so not only is it tall, but it's also heavy, and that makes it a true monster truck. As if that's not enough for you, sometimes the Bigfoot 5 would add in some other times for its driving ability and increase its weight even more. Now don't try to understand the logic of a monster truck maker and its driver, you're never going to get the answer that you want, and yet you'll understand it all perfectly as you watch them in action. Number 18. Monster Motorbike Sometimes, you just have to wonder if some of these people just have way too much time on their hands, because who wakes up one day and says, hey, you know what would be cool? Making a motorbike that's so huge and heavy that it's a literal monster. That's a great idea. Only in theory, though. 
Because you see, it's just gratuitous, and as you see this particular monster motorbike in action, you're going to get an idea of exactly what I mean. The builder, Ray Bowman, was, believe it or not, a former stunt driver. That explains how this idea came to be, because the guy is an adrenaline junkie. The world is 20 foot long. Ours is 30 foot long. Our motorbike. Though to be fair, he does state that the monster motorbike in question is honestly safer to drive than some of his past cars. That's very scary when you think about it, because just look at the size of this thing. Weighing in at 13 tons and standing about 10 feet tall, the monster doesn't appear to have any suspension travel at all. The frame appears to be an upside down ladder design with wheels and tires from a caterpillar, all hooked up to a six speed automatic transmission diesel engine. Who would have thought? Now look, I'm not saying it's not cool, it really is, or that I wouldn't want to see it up close just for the vertigo. However, does anyone really need this thing in the world? If you're saying yes, well, then fine. Number 17. World's Largest SUV I now turn my sights to the United Arab Emirates. But why? Because especially in recent years, they've been on a mission to make the biggest and best everything, really. Just look at Dubai and see how the city has turned into a living tourist attraction with all sorts of unique and over-the-top large items. But also within that nation is Sheikh Hamad bin Hamdan Al Nayan, a man who is driven, pun intended, to have some of the biggest and most powerful things around, which apparently includes funding a project to make the largest SUV that anyone's ever seen. Dubbed Dabayan, the motor vehicle's a hybrid of an Oshkosh M1075 military truck and a Jeep Wrangler. That's a unique combination, but it does have a purpose, I assure you. He actually wanted to make it be a vehicle that he could truly drive around in the sands of his nation, and what he did was fuse a Jeep with a military vehicle, and the end result was a 10-wheeled SUV that absolutely can go the distance and over any terrain. The best part of it all is that he went and proved that he could do it and took his massive SUV on the road to live up to its own hype. This is completely over the top, and I don't expect a line of vehicles like this to come out, but you never know. The Sheik is rich, and money gets what it wants, which includes large vehicles. Number 16. Biggest Pickup Truck the pickup truck is arguably one of the most beloved vehicles in all of the world today, mainly because of how it's so useful for various fields of physical labor. But for, well, you guessed it, the Sheikh Hamad bin Hamdan Al Nayan, he decided that it would be better for him if he went and took the pickup truck and supersized it into something completely absurd. This giant pickup truck that's modified from a 1950s model holds four air-conditioned bedrooms, a living room, and a bathroom, and also a motorized tailgate that drops down to become a terrace. Still not enough for you? Well, while we don't know how this is possible, it's actually a street legal vehicle. Now I don't get it either, but it's true. You can actually drive this pickup truck down the street, just don't tell me how you do it without killing everyone and crushing everything in your path. Seriously though, why do this? Why build something that has a very limited purpose and does absolutely nothing except for show off your extreme wealth and that technically you can do overtly absurd things in? Maybe it is exactly what I said. Maybe it's solely because they like to show off, and maybe it's because they feel they need to do things like this for purposes beyond any of our understanding. Oh, and I should also note here that the Sheik in question, well, he's worth over $150 billion, so that explains a lot in and of itself. Can you just imagine how many regular pickup trucks he could have gotten with that money? Number 15. The Trikosaurus 
Now you thought I was done with people showing off what they can do in regards to making over the top vehicles, but you're not even close because I'm only six entries in here people and my pet guinea pig Twinkle is enjoying every single one of them. Let's turn now away from trucks and head on to trikes because once upon a time it's likely that you rode a trike in order to get from point A to point B when you were young. My sister once rode a trike and got her ankle caught in the spokes and tore it up. It was a bloodbath. Trikes are a very balanced vehicle and thus would ensure that you wouldn't fall over unless you went really fast and turned a little bit too hard. But you weren't one of those children, were you? No, not at all. Usually you don't think about big trikes unless you're talking about certain bike makers who think the trike is cool enough to supersize and customize it in their own way. But what about a true monster trike? Just take a look at this trike monster that looks like it came straight out of a cartoon. This trike was built by a Brazilian farmer who took the building process to a whole new level and built what appears to be the largest trike ever to roll on three wheels. And as multiple videos show, it does indeed run properly. Think of the construction that it would take to make this vehicle and then make sure that it can run on its own power. Is it over the top? Well, absolutely. Does it kind of look like he just modified a tractor? Well, possibly. Is it a nice piece of engineering? Yeah, I'm probably comfortable with saying that. Number 14. Tractimus TR 10x10D100 when you drive down the main highway or a country road near your town or city, there's little doubt that you'll be able to see all sorts of semi-trucks. But why? Well, that's because they're a staple of the transportation industry and most major companies out there that ship goods or even hire people to get stuff for them use these trucks. And when you look at a standard one, you can see why it is indeed pretty big. But what is the biggest of the bunch? Well, it is out there and it's not from where you think. The Tractimus TR 10x10D100 by the Nicholas Industries SAS France is the world's largest semi-truck with a total weight of 71 tons and was launched in France on the 28th of October 2005. The truck is 12,620 millimeters long, 3,480 millimeters wide, and 4,515 millimeters high. When you look at the thing, you can see why it's so impressive in the eyes of many, because it can carry a truly large load and keep on trucking like it was nothing. You might be wondering why more people don't use this kind of semi-truck. Well, the honest answer is that few companies would ever need something like this. Plus, it's not just expensive to get, but also to maintain and to fuel. So this is a classic example of having a supersized vehicle, but not everyone needing it. Now, if they make a green version of it, though, that could possibly change things. Number 13. The Russian Zuber. Now I'll talk about a video that's absolutely cool no matter what part of the world you're living in, a hovercraft. While it technically doesn't hover in the air like most people assume with the craft, it is something that's able to glide over the water and land with such ease that it doesn't put any major pressure on the ground. And if you don't believe me, Mythbusters even once did a test of a hovercraft on a minefield. They put landmines to their lowest possible setting in terms of pounds needed to trigger it and then ran a hovercraft over top and not one single landmine was tripped. The largest naval hovercraft and the largest hovercraft currently in operation anywhere is the Russian Zuber. This thing is 187 feet long, 73.1 feet wide, and has a full load displacement of 535 tons. The Zuber is an amphibious landing craft that's able to deliver 360 troops or three battle tanks onto beaches at speeds of up to 60 knots. Is it overdoing it just a bit? Well, maybe in a certain way, but this is actually a pretty clever way to do a troop transport ship. 
Plus, this hovercraft is powered by propellers and not engines, thus drastically cutting the fuel costs in most cases. Also, you just have to admit that you totally want to see this thing on the water, as it does its job, right? Number 12. MV Mont I'll keep going on the ship's angle and talk about the largest ship ever made, period. But what type of ship do you think that would be? Perhaps one that would need size and bulk to do its task? Well, if you can't tell, I'm trying to give you a hint. No, it's not a military vessel. Actually, it's an oil tanker known as the MV Mont. This thing was 1,504 feet in length and also 226 feet in width, and that made her the largest ship in the world. The history of the MV Mont is actually quite fascinating and absolutely worth a dive into her life. She was built and then deployed in 1981, but during the Iran Iraq War, it was damaged and considered to be a total loss. Even though she was sunk, she would eventually be rebuilt and then restored back to glory in 1991. After that, it was used as an immobile offshore platform for the oil industry, and then in 2009, the vessel would be sold to Amber Development Corporation and renamed the MV Mont for the final journey in December of 2009, where she was intentionally beached and then scrapped. Now, this is a great example of using what you have for the right reasons. The MV Mont had a great purpose, serving that purpose and then going on to do another purpose for a number of years, until finally eventually being scrapped. That's not a bad circle of life for such a large ship. Number 11. The Longest Bicycle I'm going to go a bit more basic for the next one, but trust me when I say that the payoff is going to be worth it. Because when you think of a bicycle, you probably consider one of the simplest yet most endearing vehicles that's ever been made. Just about all of you watching likely learned to ride a bike when you were younger, and at times, you've probably seen bicycles that were perhaps a bit odd, which included ones that were driven by two people on one craft. Now try to pick Picture having a bike that would be powered by a whole bunch of people on a bike that just so happens to be 135 feet long. Would that be something you'd be interested in seeing? Let me know in the comments below. Well, it's good if you do, because it actually happened. The bicycle would be constructed by gas and oil company Santos in collaboration with University of South Australia. The bike is literally the length of two bowling alleys, and it makes sure that it got the record of longest bicycle, because the team that constructed this monstrosity had to ensure that it could travel over 300 feet without falling over. And as you can picture in your mind, that was not an easy task. The riders themselves would spend about nine months getting everything together, and then they had to get people to pedal the thing. They had to add a drum roller in order to help make the bike stay balanced, and after a whole lot of pedaling, they actually got it to work, which was a pretty cool sight. However, I don't expect to see something like this ever made again. Number 10. Silvercut Disc 1500T Now, how desperate are you to cut your grass and tend to your fields? For some, having a bigger mower, especially when it's one that you can ride instead of push, is something that enables you to get the job done both more quickly and more efficiently. But when you're a farmer, you sometimes need to crank that up into overdrive, and that's where you get the Silver Cut Disc 1500T. The five separate cutting units, four rear and one front, equipped with hydropneumatic suspension, provides perfect contour following even at high speeds. The mower combination attached to the tractor significantly reduces the investment and production costs in comparison to the self-propelled solutions. Gratuitous? Well, possibly. But you just have to remember that for those with big acres to take care of, time is almost always of the essence. 
So having something like this that was designed to be both efficient and good is hard to pass up. Now granted, not every farmer will need this, but if they have the size and the ability to set it up, well yes, they'll no doubt be considering it. Number 9. Hans and Franz it's very fair to say that NASA and other space agencies out there have their own large vehicles that we can observe and talk about. But I'm not going to be looking at rockets or even space shuttles, rather I'm going to be talking about vehicles that get them to the launch pad. You forgot about that step, didn't you? Well, don't worry, it's understandable, because simply put, getting the massive ships and shuttles to the launch site at the Kennedy Space Center is no small feat. In the 1960s, NASA built a set of crawlers to help get them to the site unharmed, and they've been doing it for the last 60 years or so. Hans and Franz are 3,000 tons each and only run a maximum speed of one mile per hour, but they do get the job done, and that's important when you're trying to get to space. Number 8. Terex RH400 there are certain industries that absolutely do need to have big vehicles in order to help get work done in a better fashion. The mining industry and construction industry are great examples of that. And the Terex RH400 is an example of how, for them, bigger is actually better. The Terex is one of the world's largest hydraulic shovels and weighs in at 1,078 tons with a shovel capacity of 94 tons in a single scoop. But why does that matter? Well, because on a mining site or certain construction sites, the moving of dirt and certain other materials is the most vital part of the job. But you can only move as fast as the equipment that loads up the trucks and the trucks that are moving them out. So with the Terex RH400, it can load up trucks quickly and send them out so that they can return just as quick. Trust us on the site. That saves time and money, which is exactly what everyone wants. Number 7. The Bagger 288 Now I'll stick with earth moving equipment because there are some doozies out there that we haven't talked about yet like the Bagger 288. This thing is the heaviest land vehicle in the world at 13,500 tons and it took 5 years to design and manufacture, 5 years to assemble with the total cost reaching 100 million dollars, so it's not exactly the easiest thing to get built, but it was worth it. Well, eventually. In 1995, it was itself superseded by the slightly heavier Bagger 293, but we won't hold that against it if you don't. It can move 240,000 cubic meters of earth per day, and it's heavier than 8,600 cars and as tall as the Statue of Liberty. Now before you cry out that this thing is way over the top, the work that it does can outpace tens of thousands of workers that do the same thing. Granted, it's not the easiest thing to move, but when you need a site cleaned out quickly, the Bagger 288 will get it done. Number 6. The Lark LX the Lark LX is an army vehicle, which is kind of surprising that we haven't seen more of those on our list, and it's their largest 4x4 vehicle that's ever made. Made in 1952, the Lark LX was designed by R.G. Letourneau, the same mad dreamer behind the U.S. military's massive off-road land trains, and it was the largest wheeled amphibious vehicle that was ever made up until that point. It would eventually be deployed for Vietnam in 1967, spending about about 50 years in service due to everything that it was able to accomplish. Mainly transporting items and personnel in one shot instead of multiple loads. It was powered by four Detroit diesel 671 engines that produced 265 horsepower apiece and was capable of 15 miles per hour over land or 7.5 miles per hour at sea when empty. 
Now eventually the Lark LX would be replaced, but it left a legacy of a massive 4x4 that can't be ignored. Not that you can ignore it when you're up close and seeing exactly how huge it is. Number 5. Oasis of the Seas now I'll head to the waters of the world and talk about something that no doubt you all want to do at one point in time, that's go on a cruise. There are many beautiful and scenic adventures that just can't be topped. However, if you're looking for the biggest cruise ship out there, the Oasis of the Seas is a good place to go. This was a first of its class kind of cruise ship that was made by Royal Caribbean and is indeed rather massive. Not surprisingly, they like to hype it up on their website, saying that you can conquer the tallest water slide in North America and snap a shot from up to 450 feet in a helium balloon. You can also grab a drink at the swim up bar, soak up the scene in the largest freshwater pool in the Bahamas, or even get a taste of Bora Bora with your own overwater cabana. When you sail from the New York City area out of Cape Liberty, New Jersey to Perfect Day at Coco Cay on board the Oasis of the Seas, adventure is always on the itinerary. Now I know you're just tempted to go, aren't you? And don't worry, because I'll see you there. Number 4. Balaz 75710 And back to the mining site we go. We're bouncing around a lot, aren't we? Now we're going to look at the opposite end of the spectrum from the last mining vehicle that I talked about. And before we looked at what picks up the dirt, now we're going to look at a massive vehicle that dump literal tons of it via the Balaz 75710. This was made by Russia to help out on the mining sites with a capacity of 496 tons. It's the biggest dumper truck in the world. These are the trucks where the dirt and other materials would be put into, and then the trucks move them either to a key spot for processing, like a wash plant, or they'll dump them over the side into a spot cleared for waste. The bigger these trucks, the more dirt that can be moved in one shot, and a lot of mines want that kind of capacity. Many have to settle for smaller trucks, but if they all had one of these, it's not hard to think of all the possibilities. Number 3. The USS Gerald Ford Heading now to the United States Navy, we take a look at the most important ship in their fleet. Now you'll likely know that one of the most important ships ever created was that of the aircraft carrier, a vessel that could act as an aquatic base of operations, but also could not just fire its own guns, but also launch planes and thus ensure a quick response to anyone that was in the nearby area. But then the United States took it to the next level, making supercarriers that would dwarf all that came before them, the biggest of which the USS Gerald Ford. The aircraft carrier took eight years to build, several more years to test, and is large enough to tower over even the biggest building in plenty of large towns. It clocks in at over 1,000 feet, or nearly three American football fields in length, and nearly 250 feet high. Contained in that massive space, the aircraft carrier also has a whopping 25 decks. It's powered by nuclear reactors and can house over 75 aircraft, taking over 4,500 people to maintain. And the final cost for this behemoth? A measly $17 billion, just for one ship. Number 2. The TC-497 now I started off with a land train, so why not head back to them? The TC-497 is the biggest land train that was ever made, and for good reason. The train's total length is 570 feet, which is nearly two football fields. Due to the train's modular construction, the maximum length was theoretically infinite, as many power cars as were necessary could be added along with the fuel to keep them running. It was created by the US Army and tested to see just how much it could do and whether or not it could live up to the expectations. The good news was that it did indeed pass the test, but the problem, well, just because it passed the test, 
doesn't mean that it's feasible. Due to logistics and future money costs, the project was soon abandoned, but not before making a really big land train. Number 1. The AG600 Finally, we have something from China, as they were the ones who made the biggest amphibious aircraft via the AG600. It completed its maiden flight in December of 2017. The AG600 was designed to meet the country's demands for forest firefighting, marine rescue, and other critical emergency rescue missions. In regards to the firefighting, it can carry 12 tons of water and drop it over an area of 4,000 square meters. That could make the difference between hurting a fire for good or failing to prevent it from burning everything down. China along with many others who have seen the AG600 see great potential in this large vehicle, and if others like it can be made, then many lives could potentially be saved. What did you think of this look at all the vehicles out there that are just massive compared to some of their counterparts? Which of these would you seriously consider trying to drive? And do you know of any other monster vehicles out there in the world? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.